is a Dutch island in the Caribbean Sea, famous for its extraordinary rich coral reef. A true wonder of the ocean, coral only covers a tiny fraction of the seabed, but is home to a quarter of all known marine species. Reefs provide income and food to hundreds of thousands of people. They also capture carbon dioxide and protect tropical shorelines from storms. Bonaire designated all its coastal waters a national marine park in 1979. All marine activity is strictly regulated by rangers who patrol to enforce the rules. Everything from the high water line to 60 meters deep is the Bonaire National Marine Park. We have one of the best protected reefs in the Caribbean area. Anywhere you go in the water, you are guaranteed to see some amazing um, biodiversity. The rangers use sensors to check the temperature of the water at various depths. Warming can cause bleaching, either turning the coral white or in some cases killing it. Waste water or the ingredients found in sunscreen also pose a threat as does overfishing, which can lead to the spread of harmful algae and worms. For those reasons, biologists monitor the reefs for signs of damage. People have been looking at our reefs in one way or another for the past 40 years. Now, even though our reefs are still in pretty good shape, we have lost already almost half of our reefs if we look at the five and 10 meter depths. Last year, we had a really big bleaching event where about 60% of our reefs had some degree of bleaching. Luckily for us, uh, most of the corals did recover. The health of the reef is deeply connected to Bonaire's inland ecosystem with its rich wetlands, mangroves, and bird habitats. Over the past decade, Bonaire's population has doubled. That's led to increasing amounts of waste and pollution, for instance, from deforestation ending up in the ocean. Such threats to the coral are not unique to Bonaire. Recent research shows that over the past decade, our planet has lost 14% of its coral reefs. If this decline continues, corals may face complete extinction with disastrous consequences, both for marine life and coastal economies. Each year, Caribbean reefs generate hundreds of millions of euros in income for the tourism sector. Bonaire, which brands itself a diver's paradise, is a magnet for divers and snorkelers all year round. A number of local diving centers support Reef Renewal Bonaire, a small non-profit organization led by Italian marine and environmental researcher Francesca Virdis. Ten years ago, she set up the foundation in a bid to save the island's disappearing reefs. Just a few decades ago, this shallow area, covered with dead coral debris, used to be a thriving reef. Unfortunately, coral reefs are dying all around the world. And although in Bonaire we can still uh, say that we have sort of one of the best Caribbean reefs, it's not as pristine as it was. One way to give coral a fighting chance is so-called coral gardening. Around 15,000 corals of several different species are grown in local underwater nurseries. Reproduction is encouraged by cutting the coral in half, a technique known as fragmenting. Corals are, in reality, are colonies of thousands of little polyps, and they can split and form new polyps. So let's say I'm a coral and I cut a piece of my arm. The arm will be able to grow another Francesca, and Francesca will be able to grow another arm. So we have two Francesca. Reef Renewal Bonaire has only a few members of staff. The non-profit organization relies mostly on private donations and volunteer support though some of its projects do get public funding, including from the EU. We are outplanting more than 7,500 pieces of coral this year, over the 10 restoration sites we have. On every tree in every nursery you have here, all the corals are from the same genotype. And this way, when they are put together or they touch together, they will grow together and fuse together. 
Genetic similarities within coral, however, can make the reef vulnerable. A new restoration technique is able to eliminate this by using the coral's reproductive cells instead of fragmenting. We use the sexual reproduction of corals to produce new, genetically unique individuals. And it's very important because the highest is the, the genetic diversity on the reef, the more resilient is the reef itself. The coral releases reproductive cells into the water during what's known as mass spawning events. Researchers collect these, fertilizing them in the lab to produce larvae that then settles on star-shaped ceramic plates in floating pools at sea. We make sure that we have a lot of larvae settled on these stars, and, uh, and then we bring the stars in order of thousands, and we all plant them back to the reef, and then we monitor the growth of the little settlement on it. Klein Bonaire is a small protected island off Bonaire's west coast. It's home to a vast reef of staghorn corals, 2,000 square meters in size. This is just one of reef renewal's many plantations. The team stressed that everyone can play their part, be it using eco-friendly sunscreens, making a donation, or even by becoming a coral restoration volunteer themselves. Divers can take a two-day training course to learn the basics on how to maintain a coral nursery. Day number two of your reef grows way faster, and it grows with tips, a tiny, tiny, tiny... Cushion. Overall, more than 2,500 divers have been certified yes. from the foundation. Cool, nice job. Almost 80% of the dive shops in Bonaire, they're part of the program now. And the people is super, super enthusiastic. These two young marine biologists are from Belgium and England. I think that reef preservation projects are vitally important. I really wanted to learn about it in much more depth so I could play a role. Sometimes it seems very far away, like it's under the water, how can you help? But this is giving people like a hands-on opportunity to make a difference. This work by enthusiasts can make a huge difference in the preservation of local reefs. But the long-term survival of coral will depend on our ability to reverse both global warming and eliminate other threats to marine life in the decades to come.